Hello, and welcome to this short lecture from the History Teachers Talking Podcast. I am Peter Zablocki. My fellow history teacher and best friend Tom Reska and I co-host full-length episodes of History Teachers Talking Podcast, but we decided to supplement the longer episodes with these short lectures that will be brought to you by either myself or by Tom and dispersed between our regularly scheduled topics and conversations. Ever wonder why school buses are yellow? Or actually, why school buses ever even exist? I did. The history of the school bus can be traced as far back as 1886, when the Wayne Works made horse-drawn carriages known as school hacks or kid hacks in Indiana. It was in 1869 that the Commonwealth of Massachusetts passed the first legislation in the United States allowing the use of public funds for transporting school children. Before that, children simply walked or rode from wagons and sledges to get to school. That was actually the case all the way through until about 1892 when the Wayne Works was commissioned by a school district in Ohio to build an official wagon for student transportation purposes. By 1914, the automotive industry was beginning to boom and Wayne Works saw a great opportunity to motorize its carriages. In 1927, a Ford dealership owner named A.L. Luce built the first bus that primarily used steel panels. In 1930, Wayne Works introduced the first all-steel school bus body with safety glass windows. Still, that was not quite enough when it came to concerns of different parents especially with regards to the safety of their children. This led to a turning point in the history of school buses in 1939, when Dr. Frank Sir organized a conference at the University of Manhattan to develop school bus standards. During that time, a total of 44 new national standards were created, determined everything from interior dimensions to seating configurations to the famous yellow color that the school buses sport today. The reason why it's yellow is because studies show that yellow was the most eye-catching color to human beings and because it was especially visible in the early morning and evening light when school buses were usually operate. During those seven days of deliberation in the Grace Dodge Room at Columbia Teachers College, Sir said he hung strips of different paint colors from the wall. It was about 50 shades ranging from lemon yellow to deep orange red. The conference attendees, which included representatives of the bus manufacturing industry, selected a small group to make this final color selection. What they went with was this orangish yellow color that became the industry standard ever since. It was initially christened the National School Bus Chrome. It was a reference to the lead chromate yellow in the original paint. The United States General Service Administration, a GSA, now calls the color National School Bus Glossy Yellow, or simply color number 13432. Though 35 states immediately switched to painting their buses yellow after the conference, it wasn't until 1974 that the change had finally been implemented throughout the whole country. One of the- Greetings from Evergreen Podcasts. We're rolling out a listener survey and we want to hear from you. The information in the survey will help us gather statistics and in turn make our shows more appealing to advertisers. I know most people don't like ads, but this is one of the only ways our shows make money and help keep their lights on. We promise it will only take a few minutes, but the impact on our podcasts will be tremendous. As a token of our appreciation, we'll randomly select one lucky participant each month to win an exclusive merchandise package from Evergreen Podcasts. Head to evergreenpodcast.com slash listener survey to help a show and possibly get some free stuff for doing so. We can't thank you enough for the support. Now back to the show. The biggest drawbacks from the school bus was the consolidation of schools. And I'm not sure if it's really a drawback. However, the old one-room schoolhouses that were seen throughout history all of a sudden disappeared. Progressive educators favored larger schools, arguing that they would provide students with a better, more standardized education. So therefore, the one-room schoolhouse buildings closed in favor of bigger schools to which students would now be bused. School standards have evolved over the years with constant focus on improved safety. The last major structural changes came in 1977. The feds came out with major changes to butts itself, to the fuel tank, to the integrity, to the seating requirements, to rollover protection. Even those weird chains that you see sometimes hanging from the back underneath the bus and you wonder why are there chains hanging right there by the wheels. That's actually a mechanism that whenever a bus gets stuck because it loses traction, for example, during snow, that mechanism will drop the chains and it will start spinning below the actual back tires, giving tires traction. See? 
Now you know. The school bus transportation system is the largest mass transit system in the United States. Yet, the school buses account for less than 1% of traffic fatalities each year. Students on school buses are 70 times safer than those who travel to school by car because school buses are the most regulated vehicles on the road. They are designed to be safer than passenger vehicles. And in every state, stop arm laws referring to the mechanical stop sign arm that swings from the side of the bus when you stop protect children from other motorists. If you look at fatalities, it's not the occupants of the school bus that have fatal injuries. It's the people that run into the school bus. Historically speaking, the yellow school bus has become a powerful representation of education and access in American history. The case is collectively known as Brown versus Board of Education, in which the Supreme Court decision struck down separate but equal public education in America started with a demand from black parents in South Carolina that their local school district provide a school bus for their kids. President Jimmy Carter started his political career on the Sumter County, Georgia School Board, where his first major act in 1955, one year after Brown, was to advocate for school buses for black school children. When Georgia State School Board agreed to provide buses, according to Carter, the legislator ordained that the buses loaded with African American children had to have their front two fenders painted black. They wanted everyone to know that the bus was hauling black kids instead of white kids. 20 years later, in 1970s, when a federal judge in Boston ordered the desegregation of the city's schools, yellow school buses were literally the vehicle of change. While the racial segregation in Boston schools was partially the result of racially segregated housing patterns, the judge also found that the city school board had intentionally segregated schools at all levels and provided inferior educational resources to black students. Because whites and blacks lived in different neighborhoods, they would therefore go to different schools that had different resources. As a remedy, the judge ordered to put children from black neighborhoods on school buses to white neighborhoods and vice versa. The order met with violent protests from white residents and mobs hurling bricks at school buses in predominantly white South Boston. While Boston has come to represent country's most violent reaction to busing, Detroit, San Francisco, and many other metropolitan areas also struggled with busing as a remedy for school segregation and educational inequality. While many white Americans framed their opposition to busing as a preference for neighborhood schools, children had been riding school buses in Boston and elsewhere for decades. Even without incident, Julian Bond, the civil rights activist and later chairman of NAACP, observing the tenor of the opposition to school desegregation by busing, concluded, it's not the bus, it's us. Today, in the United States, 26 million, or rather 55% of all school children, will board the 480,000 yellow school buses across the nation. Two biggest issues in 2022 are new technologies like apps to track bus location, alternate fuels, such as potentially even making buses electric. Even a new color for school bus might come up for debate. What does the future hold for the iconic vehicle? Thanks for listening. I hope everyone enjoyed our podcast, and if you would like to email us, you can do so at historyteacherspodcast at gmail.com. The Battle of Waterloo was one of the most famous turning points in world history. But what happened next? My name's David Montgomery, and I'm the host of The Siecla, a history podcast that tackles exactly that. Join me as I cover France's overlooked century in between Napoleon and World War I. The Siecle, spelled S-I-E-C-L-E, is part of the Evergreen Podcast Network and can be found wherever you get podcasts.